this video is looking at categorical data in the context of the core data analysis for VC further mathematics. In this video, we will look at defining, organising, displaying, interpreting, and reporting on categorical data. Firstly, defining categorical data. So categorical data is a collection of information that's divided into groups. It's what we typically think of as survey responses. So we're asking for people to give us worded responses um, to a set of questions. We need to be really careful though of responses that are numbers that are actually assigned to a group or a category. So things like star ratings, so five stars or one to five on a scale, they're actually corresponding to a category of response. Other things are things like shoe size, um, potentially clothing sizes, things that might be given to you as a number. But think about if I added those numbers together, would it make sense? So with the sum of the postcode for Ivanhoe and the postcode for Northcote actually makes sense when I add that number together. We find it doesn't. So that points you in the direction that this is a categorical set of data. Beyond identifying that we've got categorical data, we then can split that type into two further um, sections. So nominal data is something where um, the name of the data value is also the name of the group. So your favourite vegetable, potato, carrot, broccoli, your favourite colour, your favourite sporting team. Whereas ordinal data is the same, however, the responses have a natural order to them. So potentially things like assessment grade, A, B, C, D, E, um, high, medium, low. There's a natural way that we can put the responses in order um, pertaining to those category names. So quite often a typical exam question will be one where you are given the names of some particular variables and you're asked to decide whether they are categorical or not. The alternative would be numerical. And then if they are categorical, potentially you are having to decide, are they a nominal or an ordinal variable? So your first point of business is to decide, is it categorical or numerical? And then once you've done that, determining whether if categorical, can you split it down further to nominal and ordinal? So in this example here, a study was conducted to investigate the association between the number of moths given there as less than 250, between 250 and 500, or more than 250. So there we would be assigning our answer to a, one of those three groups. So therefore it is a categorical variable. The second variable, the trap type, sugar, scent, or light. So again, we would be selecting one of those three groups to put our response into. So again, it is a categorical variable. So they're both categorical. That's our first thing. We've got categorical. The second part is then whether they are nominal or ordinal. And so the number of moths, it would make sense that we can order those three groups, the responses that come in. And so we can say then that first number of moths is ordinal. The trap type, however, sugar, scent or light, there's no natural order to put them in. You might say, oh, I can put them in alphabetical order. Um, I could put them in order of how many letters there are. Okay, so there's lots of different ways you might come up with, but there's no natural um, order that we would put those in. So therefore we can say that one is nominal. And so then when we look at our responses here, that we have to select from, both nominal variables, no, that's not true. Both ordinal, not true. A numerical and a categorical, no, not true. We said they're both categorical. D, a nominal and an ordinal, in fact, we've got them the other way around, so that leaves us with E, an ordinal variable and a nominal variable respectively. So it's really careful that you're reading the 
choices really closely to ensure that you're not rushing and getting them confused. Another very typical type of question that you ask is when you are given a set of data, so with multiple responses, multiple variables there, and asked to identify how many of those variables are categorical. It may ask different things. Are they numerical? Are they ordinal? So depending on what the question is asking. But for this one here, the following table shows the data collected from a sample of seven drivers who entered a supermarket car park. The variables in the table are distance, as given from the distance traveled by the individual to the, from the supermarket to their home. The sex of the driver, whether they were male or female, they're only given two options to elect there. The number of children that were traveling in the car. The type of car, as indicated by a sedan, a wagon or other. And noting, especially here, that the type of car was then assigned a value, a number. However, the number three indicates other, number one indicates sedan. So remember, they would be technically a category. And finally, the postcode of the driver's home. And so here, how many of these variables are categorical? So going through the options, distance in kilometres is a numerical. Sex, male or female, yes, that's categorical. Number of children would be a numerical variable. Type of car, categorical, even though we've given assigned a number to each category. And postcode, categorical. Maybe your postcode is a value, a number that is assigned to an area um, and based on the distance from the city, CBD. So how many of those are categorical? We can see we have three of the variables. When it comes to organising categorical data, this is something we need to do before we can analyse and interpret. So the styles that we have available to us to organise are frequency tables, and they may be just raw numbers or given as percentage frequencies. We can then organise categorical data into bar charts or segmented or stacked bar charts. And we'll look at some examples of both of those. In terms of statistics, the key summary stat that we tend to use for categorical data is the mode and that is given as the most frequent data value or, or group. That can sometimes be referred to as the modal group or the modal category. So just be aware that that word modal means mode, the most frequent. So our first example here, we've got 12 people who were asked their favourite colour, and we've got our results here. We want to organise those results into a frequency table and then convert those frequencies to a percentage frequency. We're going to give those percentages correct to the nearest whole number. So in order to organise these, we want to note down the possible responses. So the colours that we have there, we've got red, we've got green, we've got yellow, and we've got blue. And then our frequency is just the count. How many can we see? And so in that group, we've got three red. We have three green. We have four yellow. And we've got two blue. We should always check that our frequency adds up to the total number that we have been told have been surveyed. Then to convert that to a percentage frequency, a reminder that to find our percentage, we're taking the frequency divided by the total and multiplying by 100. And so that would give us 25% there. So we've got 25% for red, 25% for green, yellow, four out of 12, times 100 would give us 33.33%, but we'll we're going to the nearest whole number. And finally, blue, two out of 12, 
would give us 16.77 occurring, so we'll go to 17%. And again, we should add up those frequencies. Now, depending on rounding, it should add up to 100%. But with your rounding, sometimes it may be that um, you've rounded down a couple too many um, and it's ended up at 99 or it might end up at 101. That's okay. But if you end up with 82 or 120, you know you've made an error and go back and check. We now want to convert our frequency table into a bar chart. So some key things when we're talking about a bar chart. We must have separation between um, the bars. Oops, between. That shows the separate categories. So they shouldn't be touching, not a histogram, a bar chart. We need to label our axes, okay, and any other information we might need. So we are just going to a bar chart. We need to have a maximum number of four. So let's have our frequency here on our vertical axis and our horizontal will be our color. Now I'm just going to use the first letter to represent those because I can't quite fit that in and our color there. Now we should be using a ruler when we are drawing these so that we have nice, clear, straight lines. And remember your bar goes as high as the frequency. So for red, we've got a frequency of three. And I do like just to shade in those columns, particularly if you're doing this on an assessment, it means it can be really clear that that is where your column is. There's no confusion. Yellow, we've got four. Frequency of four. And shading in. Green, again, a frequency of three. And blue, a frequency of two. And so there's our bar chart. Nice and simple, but make sure it's nice and neat and that you've got all of those labels and definitely that separation between the bars. When we want to show this information as a segmented bar chart, or sometimes that is called a stacked bar chart, we are always wanting to use the percentage frequencies for this. And that means that my bar, I'm basically taking all of my frequencies here, my percentage frequencies, and stacking them on top of each other so that I end up with one bar or one column that adds up to 100%. And so again, I still need to label my axes. Um, and in this case, I'll actually need a key so that I can show those different colors um, in that bar. So here, let's put our percentage frequency as our label and our um, vertical axis. And we should be able to go up in 20s, up to 100%. Now I know that my column will go all the way up to 100%. And then it is a matter of splitting it according to these percentages here. Now normally we would start from the bottom and just stack our way up. So we've got 25% for red. So carefully making sure we're reading our scale, putting in 25%. We have um, another 33% for yellow. So if I add those two together, 58. So I'm going to be just below 60 here. Then I've got another 25 on top of that. So 83% in total. So just above the 80 here. And then that should leave me 17% at the top, which would get me up to the 100 mark. Now I would like to put in a little key. So I might actually use that if I have them available to me, use the actual colors 
or if I don't, it's really important that I do have this key on the side so that we can see what our different categories are. Just popping in our key as we go. Okay, so I don't have all the colours there correct, ready to go, but at least then my key is showing us that information correctly. Next, we move on to interpreting that categorical data. So when we're asked to interpret it, we're usually asked to identify a specific frequency or percentage frequency from a table, a frequency table or a bar chart. And so two things to look out for. You want to carefully isolate the piece of information you're being asked for. And then please always check before you give your final answer, are you being asked for the number, the raw frequency, or are you being asked to convert that information to a percentage of the whole data set? And so here is a typical um, graph that you might be given, a bar chart. We can see what this is given as a frequency and there is this little information here, N153, means that there are a total of 153 respondents. That will usually be given to you as part of the question as well. So there's 153 pieces of data represented here. So if I needed to give a percentage, that's my total number that I'm going to use to convert. So an example here, we have that same graph. So a development index is used as a measure of the standard of living in a country. The bar chart below displays the development index for 153 countries um, in four categories, low, medium, high, and very high. So we can see that clearly in our bar chart. So part A, how many of these countries have a very high development index? And so we're looking here at our very high category and our frequency of that particular column. So when we look at this and read across carefully to our, um, our scale there, we can say that we've got a frequency of 31. And so how many countries? We want just the frequency of 31 countries. This part B. What percentage of countries has either a low or medium development index? So this time we are looking at low and medium combined, and we're wanting to convert that to a percentage out of the total of 153 countries. So low, we can see has a frequency of 45, and medium, has a frequency of 49. So when we add those together, 45 and 49 out of the total of 153 countries and multiply by 100 to convert that to our percentage, we get 61.44, correct, two decimal places. So the question itself would usually give you um, a level of accuracy. So it may ask correct to the nearest percentage. So in this case, 61%. Or it would be a multiple choice question and you'd be picking the, the percentage closest to the appropriate answer. Second example here, we've got a series of segmented bar charts or stacked bar charts. And so this is relating back to that scenario with the moths and the type of um, trap. So here there were 300 sugar traps. We're told how many sugar traps. The number of sugar traps that caught less than 250 um, a month is closest to. So let's check out um, the number of moths, our key. We've got less than 250 is the white section. And we are talking about sugar traps. So we're talking about this section here sugar traps. And so there we can see from our segment bar chart we have 30%. So 30% of the sugar trap trapped less than 250 
moths. And so of the 300, 30%, so to find 30%, we do 30 divided by 100, multiply that by 300, then the total number, and that tells us that 90 um, traps fell into that category of trapping less than 250 moths. The final thing we need to talk about in terms of categorical data is reporting on that data. So when we're analysing a single set of categorical data, we're usually just asked to identify the most common response. And so as we said, that summary statistic that we use here is the mode of that data set. So what was the most frequent response? It is possible to have two equally high categories. So if you, we had 10 possible different responses, we might have two of them that are both the most popular. They are, they are equal first, and that is called bimodal data. So it is very possible to have that. So when you're going to comment on your categorical data, you want to comment on the mode category in comparison to the others. And remember, in further maths, whenever you are giving a statement, you are always backing it up with a statistic. So in this case, what is the most frequent data category or group? And what is the frequency or percentage frequency that supports your statement? So that's what we're saying, always include those values to support any statement you make. You also probably want to refer to how the data is changing. So how, if you've got a modal data um, group and it is at 40%, and you want to compare that to the next pop, most popular response at 20%, for example. So that's sort of what we want to do. And so going back to our original um, example, we had 12 people ask their favourite colour. Looking at our bar chart here, and we've got a, a percentage frequency given there, we want to comment on the results here. So the key thing that we want to say is that our mode, our most popular response is yellow, and giving the percentage frequency there, and then also giving the percentage frequency of the remaining categories. And so here is an example of a comment. It can get quite wordy when you are trying to include everything. More commonly, you are just asked to identify the mode of that particular data set. And so simply the yellow being the most popular response with 33% of respondents would be sufficient in that case. Okay, so that covers um, all of the basics for categorical data, that organising of data, um, placing it into a, um, a display, analysing, interpreting, and finally reporting on. So hopefully that has helped. Make sure you do some practice there and particularly focus on adding in some good examples and definition around how you identify categorical data.